Before our show begins, we offer our condolences to the families and friends of Mr. Leonard Nimoy, as he recently passed away after complications with COPD, but whom many may recognize from the Star Trek series. You lived long and prospered, and may you now rest in peace, Mr. Spock. Just don't tell Dr. Sheldon Cooper about this. Get off the freaking net! And welcome to the Blazon Nation! Where the World Wide Web and real life world collide, and brings current events to you, then takes it all into debate. With your hosts from the depths, The Thing, and JBJ Blaze! And I wanna talk. Up talk. This is a train wreck. Anyway, welcome back! To Blaze Our Nation for the first time in 2015. And. Uh, oh! Chatterface, introduce yourself. I didn't include you uh, in that. Hello. My name is Bruce James. Uh. I that's... unfortunately came up with that nickname for you. That's $5. Not really. Anyway, this what? is Blaze Our Nation episode 20, <laughs> recorded on. The 25th of April, 2015. So like I said, it's the first one of this year because we've been on about a four-month hiatus because I've been doing a lot of school and, well, I've been trying to keep up with school, I'll put it that way. So, how, j just maybe a quick gist of what you two are currently doing? And then we'll get into our little, uh, segment of how our months have been. Maybe even right, your year, first. Cheddar, since you haven't been on in at least a year. Yeah. Not at least a year. Go uh, ahead, Thing. Alright. Um, well, uh, for the past couple months, I've put a lot of money into... Uh, renovating a new place in a condo, so I finally moved out of my parents' house, and now I am feel more independent, and I still have my PC with me, I have my bed, my everything. It's wonderful, and I can't wait what the future is going to hold for the rest of my journey. So that is the current situation that I am in right now, and GTA 5. Yeah. And I'm the only one who is here who has not played it yet. I'm playing it right now. Amusing. <laughs> and how about you, Chad? Uh, pretty much GTA 5, honestly. I don't really have an interesting social life or uh, interesting life at all. That's what I've been mostly just been doing the games thing pretty hard. All right, Got a new and graphics I'm... card recently. Oh, nice. Sorry, hmm. You're just going to interrupt me there, JBJ? That's fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you approve. All right, let's get into the next segment. This is boring. <laughs> I know, I just said that about my own show. Side it wasn't false. Talk, talk where we aren't actually on. Wait, say that again. Say that again. Say what? that again. Say what again? Something about something not being false. What? Never mind. What are you on? I'm on my computer. <laughs> and... <laughs> okay, that was actually pretty clever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank How long you. have you been waiting for somebody to ask you that? About a few years. Yeah, that's what I thought. Sidewalk talk. Talk where we aren't actually on a sidewalk. Yeah. Brace yourselves. It's the run. Okay, that's the worst part about having all those bumpers on one playlist is they automatically play. But who wants to go first? The person who will have the most baggage since he hasn't been on in uh, about a year? Or the person who's 
been on not since the last episode. Who wants to go first? Uh, I didn't hear the bumper. What what are we supposed to do? Talk about what's going on with all your baggage in the previous my, year. My baggage. <laughs> well, I mean, I got a new suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to find a way to incorporate the term baggage, and it didn't. Yeah, you were it, trying really hard. It didn't work so well. Didn't. I'll, I'll start. I'll, I'll I'll save you. I'll Thank be quick because my life's disinteresting and unamusing. I hear you. Uh, what have I been doing since what last a year ago? Yeah. About Basically that. nothing. Uh, senior year of high school. That's exciting. Not really. I'm it's not, the best thing uh, ever. I just, Home stretch. yeah, I guess there's that. That's cool. Uh, I've been at the same school for seven years, so I'm, I'm glad to be finally rid of it. Uh, just went to Washington DC last month with my class. That was, that was fun. Good times. Um, most of them are pretty inept at traveling. So I was there to be helpful and Washington you know, DC. Isn't that where the white house is? Did you get to see Obama? No, I didn't, thank God. Uh, oh. That's Yes, that's where the White House is, along with a whole bunch of really awesome museums and mediocre restaurants, which we made sure to visit all of. Just please tell me, what would you do if you met Obama in person, ever? Um, I'm not going to answer that question, because I'm fairly certain the NSA is listening. <laughs> yeah, they are. Actually, and pretty soon this... Uh, Several different ceases. kinds of bodily fluids would be involved, and I'll leave it at that. Alright, All sounds... Right. I'm not sure what the word for it is. I'm thinking appropriate... I don't know. Apt, that's... apropos? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know what's going on in your brain, Blaze. But yeah, that's Some it. Days mostly I wonder mostly about the, it the video games, the video games and the reading. I'm rereading the Game of Thrones books. Those are good. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, that's, that's really, I mean, I'm not an interesting person. <laughs> Apparently not. And then, so I guess it'll be my turn now. I, like I said, I've been trying to keep up with school, and as we are doing this show right now, I am losing time for my homework as well. Well, it's your fault it took an hour and a half <laughs> to get started. Yes, yeah. and that that's a major example of one of my biggest deficiencies lately, and I've talked a lot about it on my Blazy Logs, which I'm I'm honestly kind of struggling at even my YouTube content and all that. Because it takes me about Really, about an hour per video minimum, I think. And I've talked a lot of, about my procrastination problems, habits on my Blazy Logs. Just with, I mean, the moment I get home, I want to search something up or whatever or catch up on some messages. And then, yeah, I should probably get to my homework now. And then, yeah, not... Not the greatest attitude, but I'm working on it. Both the homework and my attitude. You do your homework last because you will be older and therefore wiser. <laughs> I like that. Too bad it doesn't really serve me all too well. Well, that sounds like a personal problem. I have a lot of personal problems, my friend. And then, uh... Actually, I'm, I'm, I don't think, I think I might have mentioned this in our little intro, but I kind of feel lucky to be as awake as I am right now, because last night I was at my school, JMSS, for a wake which took place from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. And it's not a long string of funerals, as the name would imply. Not at all. It just means you are to stay awake 
from here to then, and basically just a bunch of activities. So we had board games going on, movies, uh, what else did we have? Any here? good movies? There, there's a Blu-ray copy of The Avengers, There's an, and a few other movies I don't remember the names to. I didn't really pay attention. But I suspect The Avengers is a good movie, only I've... You haven't seen The Avengers? Not much of it, no. Just That's a, that's a great some, movie. It's a great movie. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I hear. And then, what else was there? There was also a... Uh, a sort of... Mock version? I'm not sure. I I don't know what it is with me. And my choice of words lately, but I'm trying to figure out the right word to describe things for. But, we, I'll put it this way. We had our own version of The Amazing Race, which we can do at certain spots of the school. And... and that what is one, The Amazing Race? It's basically where you travel around a country to certain checkpoints... Where you'd get clues or puzzles that you gotta solve or whatever. And... But is this like is this like a like a game adaptation? Yeah. Yes, adaptation. Thank you, thing. <laughs> that is. That's what I'm here for. An excellent word to use. That's why we pay you the big bucks, thing. <laughs> Make it rain. Wow. Well, Be here all night. <laughs> well, why you might At this pay rate, the big yeah. bucks, cheddar? Unless. Uh, Unless Canadian tax money somehow goes to the U.S. You don't know that it doesn't? I didn't think so. Because I was pretty sure Canadian tax money stays in Canada. It goes to your nationalized health care, which is yes. terrifyingly bad. Eh, depends on who you talk to. Some of us like going to the hospital and not having much of an expense, but I don't know. It's also really nice to have to wait eight hours. Yeah, that's that's the only real problem about it. Which can I be find. a decently sized problem when you're bleeding out in the waiting room. I, th I think they do make special cases for those who are in extreme emergency. <laughs> that's why Liam Neeson's wife died. Hear Other... about that? They went skiing up there, and since they were in Canada, they couldn't get help for her, and she died. Hmm. I don't know. It kind of well, sucks. Well, other than in, uh, apparently when my middle brother had a black eye years back, uh, there was a guy at the hospital who was bleeding all over in his hand. Well, his hand was bleeding all over for the sake of... Uh, being safe with how I'm wording things. What? Nothing. His hand was bloody. Yes. You didn't. You didn't want to say that. Oh, I just couldn't think of a better way to put it. I'm running most of this off the top of my head. Unfortunately, I still haven't taken. Uh, Mr. Thang here's lesson to heart of uh, writing down what I'm going to say for this segment before I actually take my turn talking about it. Well, it's, 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 the, it's the Bill O'Reilly method. Do it live! Do it live. Apparently. And, yeah, that's been about it. And been trying my best to keep up with stuff whether it's school or other things, even stuff in the news. I mean, I'm surprised it was actually a bit difficult to figure out stuff for what'll be coming up. And, you know what, I'll start it right now. Wait, sure Thang didn't get to say anything. What, about what I did? Yeah. Last year? I thought I, I thought you oh, oh, but like, isn't this a different segment now? <laughs> Oh no! I'm so I think, confused. No, what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to run down the articles. 
I'm pretty sure, wait, oh wait, thank goodness, it's been a year since you've been on here, Chad. So that might be why. You don't okay, yeah, whatever. That usually, you, comes we next. briefly talk about what the article is about, and then we get into the discussions of it. Let's do that. What article are we talking about? Wait, wait, wait. I'd have to do the bumper first. But so you've uh, both taken your turn at expressing. Yeah, I probably about about talking about your past lives. Yes, my past life. <laughs> whatever that means. I was Focus a cockroach. On. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. definitely representative of yourself. No offense, man. How am I not supposed to take offense to that? <laughs> <laughs> I meant it in a friendly. Just play the bumper. I, I think I'll be safe for that way. Will do. <sighs> Yeah, so yeah, I've been pretty much just trying to keep up with things. Play yeah. the bumper. Well, I feel like I've hardly talked about what's been going on in my past four months, other than well, basically a lack of content. I've been procrastinating a lot, and I'm trying to keep up in school, with school. And actually, I'll, I'll put this in there. I've been doing a lot more of my written blogs lately. Which you can find at jbjblaze.blogspot.ca. And warning, they are rather personal. So, there you go. Happy birthday. And brace yourselves. It's the rundown. Ha! Ah, I stopped that playlist right before I got to the next bumper. Alright, so. <laughs> Professional, he says. Go on, Blaze. I try my best. Alright, so. First off, we have the interview with the developer who's been working on the game Hatred, which has become highly controversial for its, quote, ultra-violent content, end quote. And whoever wants to give a brief description of the next article. All right. Um, the next article um, is talking about a Texas boy was suspended for saying he could make a classmate disappear with Lord of the Rings sorcery. And <laughs> most likely it was just some sort of just make make believe kind of thing. You can't really make somebody disappear, but I guess it depends on the, the wording of it. So we'll get into discussions for that. Um the Who next one. Do number three. It's right. about <laughs> Phil Robertson talking about I don't know atheism or something. We talked about Duck Dynasty last time I was on this show. Actually, yeah, good point. We did, but yeah, there there's been some controversy it's, it's, again. It's the exact same situation as last time. Phil Robertson had the gall to say one of his beliefs, and everybody hates him for it. Exactly, pretty much. He says something, people get all up in his rear, basically. Whoa. <laughs> yep. That's that's the best way for me to describe it is, hey, Phil Robertson says something I disagree with. Screw him! All right. We'll do it live. Well, every all right. Part. And then the last Oh, no, article. that's not my personal opinion. I don't say uh, screw him. Other people say screw him, man. I disagree with yep. those people. I, I anyway. think we all understood that. Yeah. Good. And the last article is about a petition regarding the controversy of paid mods that have been introduced in Valve's Steam Workshop. And it's talking about a petition that reached a massive 34,000 in 24 hours. So we'll discuss on that later. Oh, and that's another article that I forgot to put in there. But I'll mention it anyway. Jeremy Clarkson being dropped from the BBC Two, oh, which ran yes. Top Gear, yep, and has disappointed a lot of people. Whether they're on the side of it's what had to be done because of Jeremy Clarkson's actions, or BBC is being a total not too bright of an organization. 
Oh, thanks, eh. thing. Yep. All right, so let's dig down. Are we just going to go down the line, or? In two. Yep, now we get into discussions. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Digging down. Let's get to the details, shall we? All right. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Dead air. What are we talking about here first? We'll just, all, all right, right so, so we're going to talk hatred about hatred first. first. My two cents on this is I don't want to live in a universe where Revolution 60 gets greenlit and hatred gets pulled because it's too violent. Yeah, and I mean, myself, I see... All I really see hatred as... Well, actually, it's not all I see it as, but... One of the big things I see it as is really all it is is Grand Theft Auto any of the numbers just with a lot more of a darker theme to it and hardly any story at all. Just this is what this guy is about. Basically just, just one sentence about the guy and one sentence about what he wants to do and then you get into the actual gameplay. It's just a violence simulator. Pretty I much. See no, I see no reason for anybody to get their panties in a twist about it. It's, it is what it is. It's exactly what it says on the tin. If you don't want to play it, don't play it. But there's no... I mean... It's like that, that movie, The Human Centipede, right? It's a terrifying mm -hmm. and disgusting film. If you don't want to mm -hmm. see it, don't see it. If somebody wants to see it, they can see it if they want to. I mean, and it's... I mean, that that's the issue with even a lot of other media is, and I, and actually I kind of relate it to, because this has actually happened to myself recently at my high school, and it's not, well, I, I, I created this warning bell mix, which is one of a, the assignments in my communications tech class, and, uh, how it works is you have one song play for 15 seconds, which is the three minutes before a period begins. And then the next song is 15 seconds for the two minute warning. And then the final one minute is where the whole, is where one minute of the song plays throughout. And in my bell mix, I have bleed it out, play out, and uh, it only got played once on the announcements. And I mean, it was great hearing it on the the announcements finally, until I was let known by my communications teacher that the that my bell mix had been removed from circulation because somebody had brought it to the Office's attention that lead it out is about suicide. And if though and those who don't know what bleed it out is, it's a Lincoln Park song. Well, it should just not be played for the sole purpose that it's Lincoln Park. Ow. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can I get my say on this? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So. Rip your jinx. I've. I have seen the trailers for this and we all know that hatred has become another one of those very popular video games when it comes to its rating system because right now it's adults only and consoles publishers refuse to publish it for consoles because they're not allowed in their retail stores but like i said this this is the next manhunt the next postal the next whatever san andreas kind of game in my personal opinion i think that the premise is just completely stupid. I mean, you're this deranged psycho killer who's going out there and is just murdering innocent civilians and law enforcement officials, and it's an isometric third-person shooter. You're just mindlessly pointing your mouse and shooting whatever that moves, and it looks like you're doing it for, I don't know, a high score or something along those lines. Of course, there's a lot of controversy regarding the amount of violence and just the moral standards on this. But here's the main point that I'm trying to come across is that 
every game that is created by a developer, they have the right to submit the game. And if people want to buy that game in particular, then they can. If they don't want to, then that's fine. I think the reason why it got pulled from Greenlight is because of all the tension that it got for being what appears to be too violent. And I assume that there's some sort of like Gamergate kind of situation where these social justice warriors are they're just making a mess about like oh are we going to be able to mod the game and put people like anita sarkeesian in it and just a whole bunch of garbage like that but this this interview basically the last sentence says games cannot be accused also for weak-minded psychopaths who cannot distinguish reality from the game world and some people they sometimes they can't see that but as we all know, there's no direct connection between video games and real life violence because realistically, both of those elements are quite different from each other. So if this game comes out, there's some people who are going to buy it. Some people won't buy it for others. They might have a little hissy fit in their pants or whatever regarding the subject matter. People just got to make a choice. I think the developers have a right to release this game if they want to. And from the looks of things, it looks like they're going to continue to go with that. If people want to check it out, I might want to check it out because I'm a gamer and I like to play games. So it might not be for everybody, but it's one that I want to check out. And yeah, that's that's all I got to say about it. I pretty much agree with you wholeheartedly. This This all reminds me of Jack Thompson's his he fit about Grand Theft Auto all those years ago. <laughs> yeah, and I think got... it's, it's like, you know, video games are making people violent. Video games are making people sexist. Video games are making people misogynist. It's it's whatever. It's not true. It's not even possible. But, yeah, it's a game. Uh, it's a game that somebody wanted to make. I don't personally see myself ever playing. It doesn't look like my cup of tea, but just because I don't want to play it doesn't mean I want to stop everybody else from playing it. And I yes, mean, exactly. my, myself personally... I would never commit any of the commit any of the crimes that would occur in the game in real life. But I mean, if there's one thing I love to do in a video game, it's do exactly that. Just kill a lot of people. I mean, in the in the case of GTA, I I tend to refrain from killing any civilians and just kill who I'm supposed to, but in the case of hatred, I just... I just find that that there's... basically because of the storyline that... I don't know, it's just the way I... uh... my attitude towards it is if that's part of, I guess, the story in a way? I mean, even if there isn't a story, it doesn't matter. It as, doesn't as look a, like there is. As a person There's... participating in the free market, you can release whatever the hell you want to on Steam. I mean, I could make a poop simulator that's just <laughs> a game where you move around a turd. And if somebody wants to play it, then they can buy it and play it. That's their prerogative. You know, funny that you mentioned that there is actually a game where it shows this guy that's that's pooping like off a building and you have to move the poop in a way that ends up getting racking points and you can buy certain things that that make your pooper faster, stronger, or whatever, more See, durable. That's, that's the kind and of that's America hilarious. that I want to live in. There's yes. a, and there's it's, a, it's hilarious. There's actually a lot of Flash games that I've regrettably seen that <laughs> like, have like a lot to do pants. with feces. Well, there's one where you're playing this guy who's on this... Uh, the the sort of it's like the helicopter th helicopter seat whatever you want to call it I forget but uh where he's pooping through this little through this hole in what he's sitting on in his toilet seat whatever it is and the goal is to poop on as many birds in the air as possible or this other game where you're supposed to shoot all this poop in a toilet. Yeah, well, I mean, now that we're—I mean, I don't know why we're talking about poop now, but it, it reminds me a little bit <laughs> of what I what I've found recently to be the truth is that basically there is no law that says you have to be a swell guy 
there's no law that says you have to be a nice person. If you're you make a game and some people don't like it, they're not going to buy it. Some people like it, they'll buy it. It's you know you you make money based on if your game is good. And I mean, and... I, I I guess what I was trying to say is, just for me, I think this game would just be something I'd spend quite a bit of my time on. I mean, yeah. it's and that's your prerogative. Mm hmm. And I mean, there's there's this sort of odd, I guess you could say, morality that I have in that basically, unless it's part of the story that I'm to kill all these civilians, then I I'll leave them alone, which is my case in stuff like GTA or Just Cause 2. I'll just leave the civilians alone, but in the case of hatred, holy crap, I'd just blow all those suckers away. That's basically your main goal throughout the entire game is to exactly. just murder everything that moves. There's, yeah. I don't even think there's going to be a story associated with this character. There doesn't have to be. There doesn't have to be. I mean, we, and specifically, I don't think there is going to be a story. And I, I mean, think, the, I think the, all of the ruckus that this has caused is more, more grounds for the developer to just make this game solely as morally reprehensible as it can be. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, and it, it's more also power real. To him. It's really a great marketing point, too, just all yeah, this controversy is. around the game. And I mean, going back to our uh, little rundown, that's the same thing with Duck Dynasty. All this controversy around what anybody does or says who's part of the Duck Dynasty cast, whatever goes on there, that's great marketing for Duck Dynasty. Because there's yeah. going to be going to mm -hmm. be people who decide, I'm done with the show. But there's are but there are gonna be people who decide, you know what, I wanna start watching this. Or is watch Duck it Dynasty even more. still on? It finished up its seventh season mm, quite a bit earlier this year. My god. And I uh, and there was some news thing on a site, some news article about the fate of the eighth season, but I haven't gotten around to looking at it yet. Hmm. I hope it's... Well, this is kind of reminding me of something that's been circulating in the uh, the news lately, is a whole Indiana thing where the guy was refusing service to gay people because he just didn't want to serve them, and he was getting a whole bunch of crap for it. It takes. It's kind of going back to the hatred thing. I mean, there's no law that says you have to be a nice person, you know, if you're biz if you conduct business in a way people don't like, then they're not going to come to your business anymore, and that's your prerogative. It's your right to be a jerk. It's your and right I, to make a game that's I mean, a jerk, jerky game. And I mean, in that case, it's called if a certain business doesn't work the way you want it to. And I mean, even it, it's Indiana, right? That uh, yeah, I think it was has Indiana. the new law, the new religious freedom law. If if a place has some belief that uh, if they have some sort of thing going on that for example if if they're dealing with cus a couple customers who are in a same-sex relationship and they don't want to serve them then i mean there's other places you can go and you i mean can, i mean you don't go there anymore you tell your friends that you don't want them to go there and they won't and the business may or may not suffer for it and that's up to the business, just like this mm -hmm. game, you know? I think this game is morally reprehensible, and I'm not going to buy it, and I'm going to tell all my friends not to buy it, and that's the beauty of capitalism. Mm -hmm. it's, exactly. it's, it's your right to do whatever it is you want to do with your private property and with your business. And I and mean, that, that's just what ticks me enterprise. off, though, is a lot of people, and even in the case of hatred, or what, what was it? In Australia... They, oh yeah, where they banned uh, yeah, Grand Theft something Auto for being misogynist. From uh, because they claim it encourages sexual violence against women, and for one thing, there is absolutely no rape in Grand Theft Auto V. If these people would do their bloody research, of course they didn't. It's freaking Kmart, man. Well, there was a mod on the PS3 version that somebody ended up using, and they were forcing their characters that were. It looked like like they were being 
stripped away from their freedom of movement. And there was this guy that was somehow like hacked Grand Theft Auto V. So if he came across you, it looked like he was kind of quote unquote raping you and he couldn't do anything. But I think they found him and they banned him or something. Well, that's why uh, that's why Oblivion got rated M. It's because there was a mod on the PC version that allowed naked character models. Yeah. But up until that mod came out, that game was rated T. Mm-hmm. That's rather silly that that's all over a modification. Well, I mean, yeah, it's, it's the Jack Thompson, Anita Sarkeesian thing. This yeah. game is making people violent. It's making people misogynist. No, it's, it's really not. It's really yeah, it's not. not. And I mean, <laughs> it's... and even going, going all around this whole thing, it's a matter of if the person can play an extremely, quote, immoral, end quote, game, but not do any of that crap in real life, I mean, should it be a big deal? I mean, I play a lot of these games. I would never do that in real life, though. Yeah, I mean, and you don't even have to do quote-unquote thing. I mean, I, I'm i fairly certain everything that's going on in Grand Theft Auto V is morally well, reprehensible and terrible, true. but that doesn't stop me from playing it because it's freaking fun. Yeah. And I mean, and at the end of the day, line. that's all that matters. And I mean, that's... I think that's one of the biggest points of video games is... Getting to do something you would never do in real life. Yep. Because and that's what's no exactly consequences. And that's what makes gaming such an amazing platform is because there are games like The Walking Dead and like The Last of Us where there are yes. really deep moral decisions that you as a character and as a player have to make and you become invested in the story and you feel really tied to all the characters and you actually feel like you're a part of that world. And then there are games like Hatred or Grand Theft Auto, where it's or you know uh, what's the Saints Row, where you it's the exact opposite, and you have like zero ties to your character, and you can mess around and blow crap up, and it's immensely fun. Saints Row Four. Yeah, Saints Super Row Powers. Four. Saints Row Four is awesome. <laughs> All right, so shall we wrap this one up? Yeah, sh- sure, so, man. But so I think I'll we run. can. I think we can actually tie this in if I if I can segue here is that uh, people are becoming more and more sensitive to such things, just as they were at that Texas kids' school. I love it. Segway. <laughs> well done. Encore. Which, and that story's full All of crap, right. too, by the way. I think this is... Uh, if I, I, I heard about this story. I haven't actually read the article that you're uh, personally linking to. But I believe this is like the third time this kid's had problems with his school. Yeah. Third time, wow. Yeah, because, one, and one both the, other times were stupid as well. Yeah, one of the times was because he referred to another student as black. I oh, mean, oh, no. Oh, <laughs> the god. <laughs> okay. N- <laughs> I mean, wait, is wait, it wait, any this, different this if he called call- Kermit Elementary? Yeah, I have never noticed that till now. (laughs) You're not allowed to talk about magic rings. (laughs) Kermit the Frog. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, would it be any different if he called him Hispanic or white? Well, you forget the cardinal rule, JBJ. If you're white, you're a racist. (laughs) True. Too true. He brought in his favorite book, The Big Book of Knowledge. Yeah. It had a section on pregnancy (laughs) depicting a pregnant woman. Oh oh my god. The miracle of life. Yeah, totally overreacting. Jesus. This kid's nine? and, And then this time, he brings in the ring of power and then tells a friend that if he puts this ring of power on his friend, his friend will disappear and... <gasps> You're a... That's a terroristic threat. Jeez. Who knew Al-Qaeda watched Lord of the Rings? <laughs> uh, and had a I, white person on the crew. I'm re- not really I, sure why you brought Al-Qaeda I got nothing, into this, I got but... <laughs> nothing for that. You watch, why you, why you gotta make it weird? Articles. 
<laughs> because they're a terrorist organization. But did, did anybody say this kid was terror was a terrorist? No. It's because they called it a terroristic threat. So. Where? Where did they say that? I don't think it's in the article. Where I is that, Jack? I'm pretty sure Where did they sure say it was a there. terrorist threat? No, I don't. I don't see that either. Unless that was in another article. That's so probably that's another same. article. Or nowhere just, would be my guess. Or nowhere. Yeah, I don't think better. anybody ever Terror. said it was a terrorist threat. Mostly because terroristic isn't a word. <laughs> anyway. Hold on. This story is let dumb. Me, let me check and this. Your school board is dumb and you should feel dumb. A ring cannot harm somebody unless it is physically thrown at them and it makes contact with the I stand the corrected. Skin. Terroristic is not a real word. Yeah, I told you. Uh, I love the, the, <laughs> quote, the quote from the kid's dad. I assure you, my son lacks the magical powers necessary to threaten his friend's existence. If he did, I'm sure he'd bring him right back. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, that kid He's could grow nine. up to be a... Yeah, he could be grow up. Who knows? I mean, he might take some interest into being a magician and oh, here I it make is. that a reality. He'll be a Wiccan. Just not just not physically like make them disappear out of existence. Make an illusion. Yes, yeah, so this story is really dumb and I can't believe I, I can't believe it happened in Texas of all places. Yeah, Texas <laughs> seems to have been going like crazy California, quite yeah. Quite a lot, actually. Anyways. Oh, and I pasted in the other article where there is a mention of it's a terroristic threat. According Terrorist. to their principle. And I mean, I, I it kind of reminds me of the well, Justin Well, the article Carter actually case. does say terroristic. Oh, yeah, yeah. it is a word. Well... Hang me upside down from a telephone pole, cover me in honey, and leave me to a slow death at the hands of hungry spider ants. <laughs> you must burn like a witch. No, not really. Anyway. Okay. But, I, mean, I guess we're going on to the next one. You must be licking my nipples with the tongue of an elephant. Before yeah. we do move on, though, it actually kind of reminds me, and this goes back to a much earlier episode, of what when I mentioned... And you wouldn't, you two weren't weren't here for that episode, but Just about spit it the out. Justin Carter case, where his message to someone who apparently was in Canada was considered a terroristic threat of, oh yeah, I'm so insane, I'm gonna shoot up a whole school full of kids and eat their soul beating hearts, and then because the I'm a misogynist. Day, Mm-hmm. No, that was Elliot Roger. Yeah, I know. He's my hero. <laughs> not actually. He's not actually my hero. <laughs> Hypothetically. <laughs> oh, I do not condone the shooting of people in cold blood. Nor the stabbing But I also do not believe he did it because he was a misogynist who had internalized misogyny in his yeah, brain. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing that bugs me about that whole hoo-ha, though, is... Even the YouTubers such as Lacey Green or KSI Al- KSI Day, they come up with that it's about him being a misogynist. There's misogynists. Anything to fit the narrative, Blaze. Anything that will further their viewpoints and narratives, you have to understand. And I mean... If we can turn something into a moral debate, and, and convince that somebody else is in the wrong solely because we want them to be, then we're going to do it. Yeah, and I mean, from the looks of it, in that case, the only one who's really being smart is Elliot Rogers' father, who's actually trying to do something for the mental health community, as with Martin Martinez, whose son was killed by Elliot. He's going on about uh, not one more, which is a lousy gun control campaign, which is annoyingly supported by these Hollywood actors. And then, uh, who else was there? That was such a creepy YouTube video. Good lord. Yeah. What? There's this, there's this, um, the son of one of the assistant producers of the Hunger Games, Elliot Roger, he made this video 
like saying it's his last video about oh, before he went and killed all the people. Yeah. 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 That was because he couldn't, he couldn't get laid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I Jesus. Think that, that's See, and much how people like I him are the exception it. and not the Screw norm. That. And that's Screw the that. thing pissing me off about all the whole cops are racist thing. Because obviously that's they're false. Not. Yeah, they're not. Except for that one guy. Who just shot that other guy six times? Oh, and the bat. Yeah, he was racist. I will say he was racist. He was a terrible person, and I'm glad he got fired because he was a bad person. uh, It was the most recent shooting. Uh, Some cop pulled over a guy pretty much just because he was black, and then as he was running away, shot him six times in the back. See, there's pretty taser. There's pretty cut and dry. That guy was racist because yeah, that guy clearly. But all the other ones, like the Michael Brown thing, nah, not a racist cop. Nope. Just a cop who was and doing his job and getting rid of somebody who assaulted mm-hmm. him and wouldn't now, yeah, stop. Now, something <laughs> one of my brothers did bring up to me is that the guy is that uh, Willison shouldn't have gone alone. But, I mean, that doesn't mean that anything should change in... What's happened yeah. there? And all the cops that got killed because people were chanting, "What do we want, dead cops?" You never really hear about them anymore. Those people are just animals. They, they, yeah, they, that's they don't all even the know Ferguson who, rioters. Yeah, you're, you're doing know. a lot of good. Yeah, you don't even know who these, the these people who got shot are. are. You have no idea who they are. They're just falling into this it's, it's spiral like if of they, somebody who says one thing and then all of a sudden they all follow without even thinking about if it. They actually thought that there were racist cops, they would have been doing something far more productive about it than just, you know, breaking windows and stealing from stores. And Darren Wilson was responding to, he was responding to a call by somebody who owned that, that restaurant or that a rest, store. Or store. Yeah. So he was called in to take action. The guy didn't steal anything and he, he ran out. And then he, he started assaulting the cop. Yeah. <sighs> And he had marijuana in his system when that happened, too. Yeah. So. I mean, the thing is, you have to look at the facts. You yeah. can't look at what has been at what has been told to you by the media. You have to look at what actually happened. And, I yeah, mean, and then and the grand jury looked at the facts and what actually happened and determined that Darren Wilson was doing the exact right thing. And here's the other thing you can't be Not doing guilty. is... Bring in all this lousy anti-police bias because it's just like any other. They're just like any other people out there. There are bad cops. There are good cops. And yes. And what seems to be like, at least a yeah. few, if not the majority of these so-called police brutality cases, they are innocent cops in terms of They're the doing law. their job and stopping criminals from further breaking the law. Yeah. And it, yeah, there's so, the every so odd one who is evidently racist. But yeah. the majority I'll, of I'll them. I'll be the first to admit that there are some cops that are racist. But yeah, the majority of them, they are doing what their duties tell them to do. Yeah, it's I just, it's, right. it's, it really sucks. Yeah. Yeah. And if I were a millionaire and I needed a bodyguard, I would hire Darren Wilson solely because I know it's going to be a bitch for him to find a job. Yeah. Okay, I have another question. How did we get from a Texas boy being suspended for a terroristic threat to police brutality cases? Because we went on a tangent and we got off topic. Because let's go to the next one. Because that's the natural flow of conversation, (laughs) JBJ. Yes. It kind of reminds me of myself and my intrapersonal conversations. And yes, if you look up intrapersonal, it seems to be recognized as not a word. But in other places, it seems to be recognized as a word. Sounds like that's something you should talk to a therapist about. It Uh, actually is a word. Intrapersonal or interpersonal? No, interpersonal. Interpersonal means... No, intrapersonal. Intra means, yeah. Because inter means across several, and intra means inside one. That's why, like, international and intranational, or infrastructure. Actually, I think right. intranational is just national. 
Yeah. Or, you know, like the, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I think that right, probably proves we're, on, we're done with that. I have topic. no interest in talking about Phil Robertson again. <laughs> you briefly mentioned it. You're like, eh. I haven't actually seen Duck Dynasty, so I really don't care. It's, it's not that great of a show. It's kind of I, funny, but... I saw 10, 15 uh, minutes of one episode, but I was looking at a TV very far away, so I did it's not It's pretty... Hear I mean, it's okay. It, as far as reality TV goes, it's pretty good, but reality right. TV is crap. Yeah, I, I don't care yeah, about that. Most reality TV shows I care about the next one. are quite folks. Or false. Fake. Faux, not folks. For God's Faux. sake, you speak French. <laughs> well, I don't... Folks. Well, I'm that's all, folks. Myself. <laughs> that's all faux. Faux pas. Do you say <laughs> folks pass? Folks pass. <laughs> but ba basically what's been going on there is he told this story about an atheist's family of atheists that gets <laughs> raped and murdered and the shit and that basically the moral of the story is if is uh whether it because they don't follow god that they don't have morality and all these publications have decided to twist that into that he's fantasizing or imagining that this is happening to atheists or that but basically making him look like a mental case for it all. When all it really is is a parable, in a way. Just a bit of mm -hmm. a violent parable. Alright. Because even in my own experience, we don't really get that descriptive of parables. But I don't really have anything to say about parables. that. I mean, go him for... Expressing his beliefs. And I mean, yeah, as... first, first Amendment. It sucks that it's being taken out of context, but what can you do? That's what the media does. Yeah. Yeah. You have the right to free speech, but you also have the right to uh, be criticized for it. So, I mean, there's that, but and, and it's I not mean, really criticism. It's and it's I mean, here's the falsehood. other thing. I I got a feeling that if Phil Robertson ever cared to, which obviously he doesn't seem to care to, which, good on him for it, but I got a good, I got a feeling that if he did ever care to, he could probably sue one of these publications at least, at least one of them for... Most certainly. But the good guys never do. <laughs> not deprecation. Defamation. Defamation, thank you. Defecation. <laughs> you no, pooped said... on me! <laughs> How no, dare dep you defecate on me? <laughs> I said deprecation. De deprecation. No, you yes. said defecation. No, I said deprecation. I am almost positive you said defecation. No deprecation. With a P, not an F. Nah. And deprecation the isn't a word. I don't believe you. Well, you Point have slip. a right to, so guess what? Uh, am I supposed to respond to that, or? Not really. Guess what, chicken butt? Uh, <laughs> it's like I'm so eight years So immature that, yeah, that we're laughing at that. All right. All right. Let's go on to the next one. Paid mods apparently suck, according to over 34,000 signatures on a change.org petition. How about that? And it's on change.org. Change I was beginning to become... Is spiteful the word for it? I don't know. I don't know how you're feeling. I, I was beginning... I... I... Mostly I because... I hate change.org. <laughs> yeah, I was beginning to... Not like change.org at all anymore, but... Somehow these... I guess these petitions in regards to stuff like Jeremy Clarkson, which is the final topic, and other, and uh, 
gaming related ones like G getting GTA 5 on PC although I'm not sure that had anything to do with Rockstar's decision other than just common sense Probably What are you saying? I I have lost complete track of that sentence. Oh, yeah, were you talking about this way? I was beginning to lose my faith in change.org, but it's nice to see that there are some sensible petitions on the site among the useless ones. So what's this about? They're saying that you shouldn't be able to make a mod that people have to pay for for a game. That's what it's that's what it's about. Huh. I don't it's know. About... Sorry, huh. go on. No, I just I don't know how I actually feel about that. I mean Well, I mean <laughs> <laughs> said the same time, Blaze. God dang it. <laughs> Our minds are on the same frequency as we just opened our mouths. That's scary that you guys are on the same frequency. I've... Yeah, we, well, we've been doing this podcast for several episodes, so it's natural, I guess. All right, I'll just, I'll just say something. I've been using a lot of Skyrim mods and, you know, Halo mods, Half-Life mods. All of those things should be free. But it's nice to know that... Um, Gaben, our lord and savior, as Reddit calls him. Hallowed be his name. Hallowed be his name. Is allowing people to donate if they want, as yeah. opposed to people like making a mod for a game. Like I, I heard this in a video by Tech Syndicate where they mentioned about this this uh this mod for like I'm not sure if it was a knife or if it was a chicken with a dragonborn helmet on that was costing like more money as a mod when the game was already put on sale in the Steam store. And I, I just think that I believe that there should be a choice when it comes to favoring the mods that developers create, like websites such as um, there's uh, Patreon, GoFundMe, that all those sorts of ones where people pay to get certain perks because they enjoy the content that those people produce. And that is, that is, I believe, the right segue and implementation to go instead of having people to pay for mods and then wait twenty, wait within 24 hours if they want a refund. And just in case, like, after that time, it might get updated and then it might crash. It might interfere with other mods. We don't want that to happen because that's basically going to ruin the whole, like, free thing. And you have several people who are taking ownership of what they don't have like the ENB mods and all of, I can't remember the the exact mod for Skyrim to make it look very nice and visualized but they're basically taking that and they're making it their own and they should not be doing that so thankfully they're reporting those kinds of mods but back to the subject matter I'm glad this petition actually rose to existence because I do not believe that this is going to favor the modding market in a way and benefit valve at all because let's be honest valve has already made over a billion dollars and it's continue continuing to go up because of all the wonderful creations of green light and and that sort of thing in the audience is huge so this is a good idea give them an option to donate money if they want to the person who has created the mod and is going to be showing it to the public and to see if they can grab some interest in their mod and install it and discuss possible bugs or fixes along with, you know, stuff like, I don't know, there's DayZ, that was an Arbor 2 mod, which came out to be really good, and we'll see where it goes from there. Did DayZ not charge as an Arbor 2 mod? Uh, actually, uh, DayZ, uh, it's a mod, so it actually did not charge. Uh, uh, they, until the like, standalone came out. The st when the standalone came out, they charged it for at least, I think, Yeah, I bought that. For, I bought that for $30. Yeah. It was a huge mistake. So, anyway. Go, go mods. Free. Yeah, I think... I, I don't know, because I, I, I can see both sides of this, honestly. Because on the one hand, I feel like if you're spending so much time on something like that, on so much work and coding and something, it's actually like a really solid, good mod... I can understand wanting to charge people for it if it's actually quality, but then, you know, it becomes a, a, an issue of well, 
what constitutes a good mod that's worth paying for and how what if they clash with each other and they don't work then how do you get refunds for shit stuff like that so i can understand why you wouldn't want to do it but i can also see why you would want money for it if you're actually working really hard on something like that so i think yeah. this yeah. system is a really good way to get that to, to uh facilitate that because i actually believe there will be people who choose to donate to mods that they like because yeah, I think there was a, there's sorry. enough of a there's enough of a market for it because like I know personally several times in the past I have pirated a game just to see if I liked it and then once I got into it I paid for it because it, I, I thought it was worth my money. Yeah, I've done that too. There's a mod that that recently came out a few years ago called Nightmare House 2. It is a Half-Life 2 episode 2 mod that was so freaking fantastic just the amount of effort and polishing and even a storyline that was put into a mod by several people just working together, I would have paid, like, I would have put down $20 for that one mod itself because it was so great. Yeah. And I think it that's really what... fantastic. That's what good things like like Kickstarter and that are for and, and, and Patreon because it's a good way of supporting people who are making content that you like. Like yeah. I've kickstarted several things, and like uh, most, my most embarrassing one is I kickstarted uh, Planetary Annihilation for a hundred bucks, mm. and that game was a travesty. That game was horrifyingly bad, but I yeah. still supported the team behind it because I appreciated what they were trying to do. They were trying to bring back Total Annihilation, which was one of my favorite games, and you know Total they didn't succeed. Total Annihilation was just awesome. I mean, yeah, and they, and they weren't successful, but they tried, and I can appreciate mm -hmm. their hard work, and that's I think that's emblematic of, and I think we're going to see a lot of that happening now that uh, you can uh, donate money to mod makers on Steam because there are going to be people who decide, yeah, you know what, I'd actually like to make something that people are interested in, and I think it's a good way of of generating some interest. Yeah, and in my experience, I've. I've seen Boogie2988 make a video about it, and I think he he pretty much describes it as you two do with that. I mean, these modders put quite a bit of work into these mods, and even Notch has gotten his two cents in on it, that with the Minecraft mods and people trying to get money out of those. And... Uh, I mean, yeah, these people do work hard on what they do, but in some cases, I mean, myself with Skyrim, I I'm wondering if any of the mods I use are going to become paid, and I hope they don't, because I cannot afford. Well, that's, I mean, I think, I think it's not going to be a thing, so I don't think you have to worry about that. And I mean,. Yeah, and I mean, in my personal opinion, I'd, I'd, I personally would rather not pay for a mod. Now, again, with what you said, Cheddarface, if the mod is exceptional, then I might make an exception. And I mean, there's yeah. even other, g with games that have in-app purchases or stuff on Google Play, I prefer to only go for the free stuff. But I might make, uh, I might make an exception. Yeah, there's a uh, there's an iPad game out called Republic, that I bought the first one and I didn't play all the way through it, but I really liked the developer and some of the stuff they were doing, so I paid for all of them. The whole, it was like an episodic thing. And, but uh, yeah, go ahead. And on Google Play, I'm I'm usually more into. If I got to pay for an app, I'll just download it from somewhere on the internet like APK Mania or Torrented. But something like Minecraft, I paid the 7 bucks for it, and I have not regretted that. Yeah. But, well, any, but most other games, I'd rather not... Pay. I mean, there's games... I think Final Fantasy was... I think it had to be about over 10 bucks or something like that. There was some game on Google Play that's over 10 bucks and I would yeah, never Yeah, it's like $17. Yeah, I would never pay that much just 
for a mobile game. If that was on Steam, then yes. Because it's going to be hopefully a big enough game that's worth it. But on mobile, I expect it's going to be smaller. Therefore, something that's anywhere's under the $10 price point. Preferably, probably something that's only as high in price as Minecraft Pocket Edition. I mean, that's the highest I'd really want to go. And in terms of anything else, like the music stuff, while well, I have a Google Play All Access subscription to music for that, so... Yeah, and I think I think it comes down to a question of economics, because I can see it economically from both sides of the coin, because on the one hand, yeah, you shouldn't charge for it, because you're essentially charging somebody for code that they already own, that somebody else already owns all the rights to, and somebody else made. Because all the things in the Skyrim mod are things that are already in the game's code, you're just changing it around. And but at the same time... The, and considering the fact that there's something about a Skyrim script editor, so... I'm pretty sure that would mean that you're using that first party's own materials to make something of yeah, your own. Yeah, yeah. And I mean... But, at the, but I mean, at the same time, economically, there's a thing called opportunity cost, which is the amount of time that I'm spending making this mod. I could be spending doing something else that I could actually be making money for. And I could see thinking that it's worth money to do this stuff. So, I mean, this is a good medium. All right. Hmm. So how does that cover that? Fine. Just fine. Yeah, I, I think I think we're all in agreement on that. <laughs> yeah. So, who thinks there should be paid mods? Who thinks there should be mods that you can just donate to the developers to? I say nobody. Donations. Nobody thinks there should At be paid most. mods. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense logically to charge somebody else for content created by another person that that the other person already owns. And but actually actually if you're they're... spending that much time and soul on it, you can get money for it if you want to. Nightmare yeah. House 2 if that was a mod, I would have put my money down on that so long ago. And so actually so fantastic. The, there's the other thing, the whole uh split of the revenue. I mean, the creator themselves get what uh gotten hardly much of it so really yeah it's just pointless yeah we should probably think about wrapping this thing up yeah yeah especially with our second last segment because we still have to go through the okay listener. so really quickly here jeremy clarkson he was being an ass he deserved to get punished for what he did, but at the same time, if he wants to make another show, I'll happily watch it. If you don't want to so. be if you don't want to be dropped from a popular television show, don't punch somebody in the face because dinner is not ready. Well and yeah, I mean he's a jerk. He's a jerk. You just don't do that. He's Why a jerk. But that? he's funny and I like to watch him. So at the same so simultaneously I could see, yeah, you were right for firing him. But you should know you're going to lose a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. that's that's the There's only thing. There's a producer, thing. too, that got punched. Yeah. BBC, too, may have made the right decision in kicking him, but yet they didn't make the right decision in terms of their moolah. Because they're not going to get so much of that moolah now because he's the guy who made them all of it. Well, And a, a I great bet you Richard Hammond and James May are not going to be long on Top Gear either. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, pretty much, not. while they'll make they've... their own Top Gear with blackjack and hookers. <laughs> and yeah. I mean, and I mean, there's already other corporations that have uh, come up with that they'd be ready to take him on and give him oh, absolutely full full control over the show. I think I think BBC made a made a risky move, but I'm I'm proud of them for making it because they stood by their principles and said, "Look, we're tired of dealing with your crap." Even though it means they're losing a substantial amount of viewership for it. Mm -hmm. and Justified. Although what I do still wonder though is if, and maybe there's nothing much more to it, but if there was something more going on between him and the producer. I but doubt it. But of course it. I could be wrong. 
He's got a, a, a relationship for being a notorious prick. I mean, they've been doing the show for 12 years. It might be kind of hard to find somebody to replace him. Yeah, and as I said, He's James May and Chris Hammond are probably going to follow. Everyone's replaceable. Everybody's got a price. Yeah. But everybody's got their own comedic value or dramatic value. I want Rowan Atkinson to be on there. <laughs> Actually, that's what someone on the internet suggested, was having Rowan Atkinson as his replacement. Mr. Bean. Johnny English and Blackadder. Alright, so, shall we get to the second final segment? Yep, second get to the responses. And Do we actually have any of those? Weird. Yes, yeah. and I will link you right away to the document. I'm not, I don't have access to it. I mean, you don't have to do it. You could just chime in if you have any opinions. I'll just listen. All right. All right, Blaze. It's just you and me on the responses. All right. And just to let you know, Thing, your audio just went kind of... Well, it not did? completely. Your quality went down a little bit. It's yeah. fine. Oh. Well, I've been on the Skype call for two hours and 36 minutes, so... <laughs> Yeah, this thing has been going on for freaking ever. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go, Blaze. All right, so first we will start off with Totes, Ubs, Totes Adorbs. Hey, guys, I'm a new listener to the show. Are you all in enough ages? Are you all in enough ages to participate in the elections? If so, then are you voting? I just recently turned 19, legal age for us to vote here, so I'll probably be voting for our election for our elections this 2016. Gotta get those corrupt. Say the word for me, thing. Bastards. Out of their Oh chairs. my God, JBJ. <laughs> you know. Cheddar, what I'm just saying. just play along. Just go. Also, continue. if you got any spare games in your Steam, why not hand it over to me? Pretty obliged. Yeah, because that's not and a begging comment at all. You gotta and keep that an eye on was those. from pretty much the beginning of the year, as well as a couple yep. other. Yes, I'm. Oh, we forgot to do our bumper. Elections. Hold on, hold on. Oh, we for gotta, God's sake! We've got to say all together, <laughs> listeners, make of them. Let's do this thing. Let's do this thing. One, two, three. Listeners, Listeners megaphone. megaphone! What they said. That'll do. Alright, yep. so... Yes, I'm participating in the 2016 elections, and I'm not voting for Monica Lewinsky's ex-boyfriend's wife. <laughs> Are you voting for is. Hillary? No. Okay, just asking. I'm voting for whichever one's not Hillary Clinton. Okay. I hear um, there's Ted Cruz, there's Rand Paul, there's Elizabeth Warren. Yeah, I got I, I got my I got my, my, my hat in the ring for Scott Walker. Whoever I seriously have is. no idea who I'm voting for and I'm old enough to participate in elections. I'm lucky I, to not have to vote in the American elections, but unfortunately I gotta vote in the Canadian elections and all we've got is Stephen Harper, who's br trying to bring in Bill C-51, C which would allow CSIS to be as big a spy as the NSA, or at least potentially yeah. enough so. And then mm -hmm. we have Justin Trudeau, who's got nothing but charisma, and that's just mm -hmm. it. So did Hitler. He did a charisma, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I but do I have mean, at keys. least. But I mean, actually, that's something I wonder about liberals: is if, or at least the ones we have, is if maybe they just make themselves seem stupid, but really, they've got some genius to them in that. Basically, they're corrupt as Hitler. 
I wouldn't compare anybody to Hitler if I were you. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't either. <laughs> As a Nazi. You realize he got made fun of and tried to change his name, but they just made fun of him some more. So lo and behold, he became what he was. They wouldn't let him into art school. No. Nope. And then the last question, I do have spare games, but I do not want to give them to you because one – one of them is Assassin's Creed Uni, which is a terrible launch. <laughs> give, the that, second one, give it to me. I'll think about it. And then the <laughs> second one is the Slaughtering Grounds, which is crap. So Actually, there's a Slaughtering Grounds giveaway, or at least there was on Steam Gifts. And I mean, I, I forget if it was ever on Greenlight, but if I voted for that thing, I regret it wholeheartedly. Cause I've True seen story. The- uh when Assassin's Creed Unity came out, I pre-ordered it, got it the day it came out, read the reviews, and sent it back. Mm. And got a refund. I, I bought it as an inventory like gift, and then read how bad it was, and then I just decided to not redeem it. And now it's yep. sending my inventory pretty much in jail. I'll probably get it at some point. but Also, the Slaughtering Grounds, apparently the developers took a picture of a bloodstain on a Google image, and they yeah. cropped it and put it into the game. Are you serious? That's another reason not to buy it. Yeah, serious. Just look yeah, it up. They I think... should be slammed with a bunch of copyright. And there were responses. <laughs> there... So, so get this. The developers, the developers made a video response on um, Jeff. Uh, not Jeff Jim Sterling. Jim Sterling. Inquisition. G- yeah, Jim Sterling. Um, and then oh, well, he made a response of their response, and then they made a response of a response of a response. And I'm just like, <laughs> this is insane. Just shut up. I mean, I, I gotta flattered. wonder if they're... I mean, they, they're they definitely maybe in some way comparable to Wild Game Studio, but I'm wondering if they're that comparable. How lazy do you have to be to just be like, eh, we're not going to make any assets. We're just go to Google Images and just yeah, dig that up that's there. A, that's, that's a true story. They didn't even mirror it. They just, yeah, we'll use that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's really bad. Yeah, that's that's good. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Oh, they did mirror it. It's mirrored on the other side of the screen. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and as for myself, I only have, I think, Gun monkeys and the ship in my Steam inventory. What do I have in my Steam? And I'm not sure if I'm really that willing to give one over to you. Maybe if you do something kind, if you do something special, I have the for ship me, too. What? I will return the favor. Oh, I also have access to the uh, uh, Steam trading card beta. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Old school, kicking it. I think I still have one of those. I also have a Unless gift I copy of it. Super Monday Night Combat from before it was free. Yep. <laughs> now I, still, I, I, fell for. I, I have, I have <laughs> a, I, it, I have a copy of the Dead Island Epidemic open beta. I, I gotta wonder what the point to that is if it's an open beta. <laughs> All right, let's, what's the next question? Let's wrap okay. this crap. All right, next question was submitted by Moises the Monk for the Blaze Sound Nation. If you paste one of them in the other doc, I'll read it. Oh, uh, Moises the Monk, Blaze the Nation podcast. So he says, I'm back. Took you like three months. Anyway, anyway, quick question. Do you guys listen to other podcasts? No. Well, um, as for me... I used to listen to a podcast called Noob Tube because they were really, really hilarious. And the first video that I saw of their podcast was talking about Bioshock in 2007. I briefly listened to a podcast called Turd Pants. That was by um, Fluffy Talks. You can obviously there's two F's and, or two L's. And that guy's pretty funny, too. He talks Wait, about s- say, uh, the reason- na- say the title of that podcast again. Blazon Nation. No, no, the other one. Oh, 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 no, Turd Pants. I did hear that right. <laughs> yes, you did. That's why I like to enunciate my words. So that that's pretty much it. I don't listen to any other podcasts anymore. I listen to one on Patreon called Welcome to Our Podcast. It's by Mike Felzone. 
You can find them on Tumblr and such as. Let's and see. that's it for me. Let's Anybody see. else? Eight years ago, I, I started listening to a podcast called Control Point. I listened to that Likewise. every week, and then I, then I listened to uh, Nation of Gamers every week, and then I listened to uh, The Shaft every week about till about two and a half years ago, at which point I stopped listening because I st- lost interest in, in, in their stuff. Uh, then I dabbled in listening to another podcast called Core Elements, which I only listened to for a little bit as well. Now, really, the only thing I sort of listen to is a podcast called The Comedy Button, which is by some guys that work for IGN. It's pretty funny, but really, oh, that's it. Don't you miss Mr. Wes Wilson? Eh. I could take him or leave him. Ouch. I thought you loved that guy. Myself, I am a very fond listener of the Shaft podcast, like Cheddarface. P- pretty much, yeah, and then C- Control Point, I haven't listened to Nation of Gamers, or at least not yet. And then I also currently watch Beating a Dead Horse, which is every, well, almost every Tuesday whenever Hodge Joss and Hodge, Josh, MC, and his friend, Beach JD, get to it. I watch Vic Spacement, 8-Bits Podcast. If it's on at a time that I can get to it. And then there's on Smite. But basically, quite a bit of the Dead Workers Party stuff, even though they're defunct now. Well, disbanded, I'll put it that way, and... Yeah. Uh, other than my own podcasts, when I go to edit them. So All right. They don't sound as crappy. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Somebody so, uh, pasted it in the document that I have access to, and I'll read it. Okay, I'll I'll post. I'll um, I'll I'll send it to that. Can you read that? Ooh, where is it? I posted it in Skype. Oh, Skype. Okay. Uh, oh, did you didn't uh, put the name in there? Should we read this one? It's it is a bit of a political kind of I'm not I'm not feeling it. I don't No, think. you're not feeling it? Mm, okay. Uh, I'm not sure well, it's something we should bring in. What what do you think, Blaze? Um I mean, like you said, it whatever is... your opinion is, people have to re- well, people don't have to respect it, but I highly no, and they won't. to do so. I think we're all kind of on the same page about this one anyway, and I don't really yeah. feel as if it's necessary to talk about. Is there another one? <laughs> uh, uh, yes, there is another one after that. Do you um, want me to edit this part out? Nah, it's fine. We just... Okay. All right, I'll 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 post his name, and then I'll post the, okay. the question. Okay, now this guy's a real... A really famous one. Whatever. Super Mastodon asks, what kind of technology do you think we will have in the next 20 to 30 years? Will the flying cars and big giant robots ever come true? Thanks, and keep it awesome. Uh, Obviously, we're going to have neurochips in all of our brains. Um, Our own personal... Um, sex robots to do with as we will. <laughs> you're you're and... going to do a Howard Wallowitz, are you? Who? Howard Wallowitz. I have no idea. He's the that inventor. Is. I don't know. Is, that a, is that a guy? He is from the Big Bang Theory TV show. Oh, that's and... why I don't know him because uh... I don't watch asinine television. And he <laughs> built a robotic arm that he once had sexual intercourse with. Why do people watch that show? Is that show even still on? It is. That's like, Sonic. hello, I am Indian, and I'm going to say something racially funny. Hello, I'm a Jew, and I don't have any friends. Hi, I'm a blonde girl, and I don't know anything about anything. Hi, I'm a nerd. Bazinga! <laughs> <laughs> we actually Can't have laughter. an episode named after Bazinga. That. That's every episode of that show. Followed by gratuitous canned laughter. Anyway, so yeah, that's my two cents. Hopefully we'll have better sitcoms in the next 20 to 30 years. Go we back better... to Frasier, please. Okay. We better start having self-leasing shoes this year because 
for those of you who have seen Back to the Future Part Two, and who hasn't? Yeah, exactly. Who hasn't? I don't. I'm think pretty sure there are people who haven't. Hasn't. But we better have self laging shoe and flying cars by the end of this year, because if we're not, then Back to the Future Part Two is pretty much the writers and producers are going to be disappointed. It's like we're supposed to have flying cars, man. Why no flying cars? I don't see flying cars shoes. ever being a thing. I don't yeah. either. That's I, just gonna that's gonna cause way more problems than it's gonna solve. I think yeah. with the Google self driving cars, which a certain person I know highly disagrees with, I think with the self driving cars we might be on our way there. Of course that's a might. Yeah, but I mean you know how bad car accidents are now? Yeah. And we're just on the ground. You know how bad it's gonna be to have car accidents? Like what if you run out of gas? What? <laughs> then the car will drive itself to the gas station, or it'll well, like, fly itself what, there. What if? Yeah, I know, but like with all of these problems we're having with the environment, with you know global warming and all that crap, however much of that is true, uh, mm, that's never it. gonna be that's never gonna be allowed to happen. We alter the climate, but not necessarily global warming. It's called weather. Yeah. Seasons change. Yes. Seasons don't fear the reaper, nor do the wind, the sun, and the rain. <laughs> yeah. We can be like they are. Okay. Anyway. Okay. All right. Uh, next one, I guess. Blaze, That'll if you want to myself. read this. Myself. Chuga MC. I wonder if that means Minecraft. Hi, JBJ, Thang, and Cheddarface, if he's here. Got what? a couple of questions for They actually you wrote guys. that? No. <laughs> if there is, I'm pregnant. Oh, you're <laughs> such a tease. <laughs> Thank you. All right, go on, please. I'm all about inclusion anyway. Number one, have you played any sports for your schools yet? Number no. two, which video game was your favorite as a kid? Sonic Number Adventure three, 2. Number three, what, what was the first gaming console you owned? PC. Except PCs. <laughs> GameCube. Chuga! <laughs> okay, Duh. have I played any sports for my schools yet? I, I uh, signed up for the basketball team at my elementary school when I was in grade 3, and then I ended up quitting. And then I temporarily was on the curling team for my high school in grade 9, <laughs> and then... And then because they ended up moving practices to Sundays, and that's, and those are the days I, that my dad gets time off from work, I had to leave that team. And if my school has a soccer team going on this semester that I'm not too late for, ever since last night's Wakeathon, I'm going in, probably. I've, you I, Canadians I, think that curling is a sport. I found I have a newly found enjoyment for soccer, and that's quoting myself from my own Twitter. Without shoes, my own Twitter. in the gym. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. indoor sock soccer. A lot of soccer. people might be afraid of my feet, though, now because I kicked quite a pee, quite a quite a pee. Feet. <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then my favorite game, my favorite video game as a kid, I th think, I mean, there were a few learning games, educational games, I should say, that I like to play, but I think I'm going to go with Catacomb Abyss. Because that game scared the crap out of me. And, well,. It, it made me very nervous going up against the zombies who looked, as we described them, as boogeyman. But yeah. that's going to mm -hmm. be my favorite as a kid. And my first gaming console would, of course, be the Nintendo 64, as far as I know. How about you, two? Um, all right, I'll go. Um, I have played sports for my schools. Um, seventh grade all the way to tenth grade. I participated in track and field, so, and I think, 
bragging rights, I managed to get third place in the high jump, and then after that, I I just couldn't go for it because my grades were dropping. But it allowed me to develop really, really strong and muscular thighs, so I'm thankful for that very much. <laughs> Thunder thighs. Thunder thighs, yeah. Yeah, I had a couple of... All right. Um, second, my favorite video game when I was a kid, it had to be Pokemon because I spent so many freaking hours just on that Game Boy all the time. I remember having that Game Boy Color that had the po- that had the Pokemon on um, the border frame. There was Pikachu, there was Jigglypuff, and there were yep. two other Pokemons. Yes, the yes, the yellow. Yellow was my favorite game when I was a kid. Anything Nintendo-related when I was a kid was always my favorite. And the first gaming console that I owned, like, like Blaze said, it was obviously the Nintendo 64 because I played Super Mario 64 on there. I also played Super Smash Brothers and a couple of other games not really developed by Nintendo. But I, we, we all have to agree here that when it comes to modding, when it comes to altering so many things about a game, it always has to be PC because those consoles, they're just really disguised PCs. PC gaming master race, as they say. Yeah, yeah. I, already, I already answered the questions, but I'll go through it again real quick here. I didn't. I don't do the sports ball. I did the music thing. I did music too. Um, uh, my first, my favorite game as a child, and my my still my favorite video game of all time is Sonic Adventure Two, hmm. uh, for the Sega Dreamcast. And the first console I ever had was the Nintendo GameCube. If you don't count the PC. Yeah. Actually, I'm not sure if we had the, but the first Game Boy video Color game, first or the Nintendo 64. The first video game I ever played was StarCraft, which is cool. I think the Game Boy was first. I might be wrong. I don't know. The Game well, Boy Color was released in 1998. The Game Boy Color was released in 1998. And then the regular I think Game I'm Boy was 89. That. The Game Boy yeah. was 89. I'm going to go with the N64 because the Game Boy is a handheld. So I'm not sure if that really counts as a console. Eh. It can and it can't. Okay, what's next? All right, next is... Here, i got to post it again. Hold on. All right, that's his name. I think it's... I think... Isn't it your turn to read? Oh, oh, wait. Yeah, it is. Oh, my (laughs) God. (laughs) I screwed up. You're giving him the wrong question. All right, so... This guy's name goes by Mitch, and the message is for the Blaze on Ancient Podcast. He asks, how can I become a Patreon? Also, what are the rewards I can get? Mm, no. Blaze, I think you might have to answer this one because I, I have no feeling. idea. I have no idea. I've... I I assume that – hold on. I assume that you can sign up as your own Patreon and then work your way um, over – over time but i don't i never had any interest i only support people on patreon i don't know actually create a patreon all right blaze you're up all right so unfortunately i guess i'm the only one who can answer this but if you want to become a patreon as in have your own patreon campaign just sign up on patreon and i think he means a patron of you with all the perks that you want your fans to have unless you don't want them to have perks and set goals da 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 and it's like kickstarter oh wait no i'm sure you already know that part but or if like cheddar face said if you want to be a patreon of me then i'm flattered patreon.com slash jbj blaze and i'm currently I mean I've I've tried multiple times at seeing whether I should have it for one project of mine whether it be for my podcast or electronic music or whatever or just all of my projects and the rewards would pretty much be to be determined if it was my internet radio called Ender Radio, which is for Minecraft music, then it might be a message of yours getting read or whatever, aired on the show. Not aired on the show, aired on the radio. 
or played on the radio, I should say, or if it had to do with the podcast, basically the same sort of thing, just being aired on the podcast, or if it was something else, I don't know, to be quite honest. And, yeah, that's all I can really say for that one. I just haven't had really any success on Patreon. I support about three people, Hodge, Josh, MC, Inside Minecraft, and Mr. Brent Copeland on Patreon. That's all about I do, all I do on there. Squeak. Yeah, my dad okay. keeps on coming in here. It's proof that we should have started this earlier, and yes, that's all my fault. All right. Um, the last one, or the second to last one, really isn't a question. So if you want. <laughs> all right. His his name is Mr. Banana. All right. And... Paste it in here, man. I'll read it. All right. That's nice Sorry. to say, Cheddarface. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I do not participate okay. in sexual intercourse with mothers. How about, Thank you very is it, much. Is, what's the next one? Is this the, is this the last one? No, the second to the last one. Mr. Banana says bananas. Okay, next one. Yeah. I'll read the next one. Thank okay. you, Mr. Banana. I, 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 I also, I too, bananas. Okay. There's All always right, money this, in the bananas. This, the name, you might not be able to pronounce this, but you can try. And Makalunus then, Naman Kayudi. And that's his question. Asks. Oh. Favorite anime, and I will respond to that with Full Metal Alchemist. Oh my that, gosh, it's a likewise. really good series. And I'm sorry to those who keep on hearing all this blipping. That's our Skype chat. Fortunately, it's our own, so. Or it's anyway. Skype. Go ahead. Um, I think I think my favorite anime has to be. Pokemon, the series. Pokemon's pretty great. I, I really love the first season of Pokemon. And then when they start getting into the whole gold and silver debacle, I just complete. That was the last game I played, by the way, as gold and silver. That's the last thing that I watched. And it's on Netflix. If you want to go check out Pokemon, it's actually on Netflix right I've now. I've seen every episode of the entire Pokemon anime. I yeah. used to watch Pokemon up until I think maybe somewhere in the season where it was Ash <coughs> and Don and Brock. I, I think right about when they got rid of Veronica Taylor, I stopped watching it. And then I decided, you know what, maybe I'll try one episode and then, oh, I it's cannot stand that voice. If you want a good laugh. <laughs> The trailer for the new Pokemon movie is out on YouTube. Oh, sweet. And it's terrible. <laughs> it's Even more worth to watch now. It is so bad. The There's a new Pokemon called Hoopa. What? Hoopa? And it has, like, magical hoops, like Sonic or something. And oh, the voice actor, God. the American dub of the voice actor for Hoopa is literally the worst voice acting I have ever heard. Holy Singularly. God. The most terrible voice acting I've heard in my entire life. Is Worse than Tom Wiseau in the room. Worse than everything. It speaks English. It talks. It oh, sounds man. so dumb. Does it say any oh, other words besides them all. Yeah, it speaks English. It talks. Oh no. And it that's, sounds that's... like a like a special eight year old kid who's not allowed to do anything at recess and has to wear goggles. What's oh, happening my... to <laughs> the talking meowth of Team Rocket being the only English speaking Pokemon. Well, there was always Mewtwo and like well, Entei. And him. Well, true. There are several Same Pokemon that speak, which is I'm fine with. Yeah. Just Lugia. not Hoopa. Lugia was another one. Yeah. Lugia? Ma uh, did Lugia. Manaphy talk? Manaphy? I don't I feel know. Like Manaphy. I don't remember Manaphy. Oh, yeah. I went to go see Pokemon 3 once and they showed the first five minutes of Scary Movie. <laughs> <laughs> that's so great All right, so I, I think the majority well other than the three All right, well, agrees it's on bedtime, Full Metal so Alchemist alright Blaze so. we gotta wrap it up let's go Yes. so that seems to be about the end of the show and I did want to bring something into the show here that what I've decided 
further direction of the show. It's not going away. It might still retain the same formula of one episode per month, or even worse, one episode per four months now. But what I've decided is about episodes one through nine, no, one through ten, will be the first season. Eleven through to this episode will be... No, this will be first season. The other one will be the sort of prologue season. So this is the season finale. Yes, exactly. I've decided I want to try Come to... Come back in October, kids. Sort of divide this into seasons. I was Why? Irish, but... It's bedtime. All right, we got to do the whole... Just... I'm Cheddarface. You can find me at Cheddarface underscore on YouTube.com. Much, much ado about cheese. That's it. Wait, say yep. that again? Uh, I'm not going to say it again. <laughs> and on Twitter, you can find me at the thing 2010 Also, you can check out my YouTube channel, uh, Splinter Cell God or SC God. It's getting really, really close to 100,000 views. So if you guys have any suggestions for the show, what I should do my celebration on, let me know. And that's it for me. And as for myself... I'm on Twitter at JBJBlaze, or my YouTube is slash JBJBlaze. I've decided I'm... I'm not sure if I'm going to use Blaze on Nation, the its own YouTube channel anymore. Because I just find it a lot easier, kind of like what Mr. Brent Copeland did with the Shaft, to just use my own channel. You just, and I mean, you just love that guy, don't you? I sort of admire Spired their him. ways. You, you want to have his babies. <laughs> He's already got babies. Be honest, though. You you, you want to have his babies. <laughs> but anyway. And Seven I mean, of my Steam friends are playing Grand Theft Auto V right now. Yes. Yeah, that's if you what don't I have that game, a lot on you can afford Steam. it. Play it. Yes, Seriously. that's that's my other thing. Get get GTA Five and uh, Social on Club. Social Club. I'm Cheddarface underscore. So I'm the underscore thing. And I'm JBJ Blaze as all. Thanks, Lori. <laughs> Thanks. But Thanks. thank you all very much for your loyal patience. Patience. <laughs> with waiting the four months for the show to finally come back, I'll get this up as or soon as I Or waiting the two can. hours for JBJ to finish a sentence. Exactly. <laughs> and. Stuff I gotta go Lord. before I'm intruded in again. Before your father it... spanks you. <laughs> exactly. This is why my mom. On your soft little rump. My mother would say I hardly have a rump. Rumps are delicate. Oh, why? After my father your mother didn't say that to me last night. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you just sorry. have to go there. All right. <laughs> That's what she said. Oh. <laughs> Well, all right. we hope you've all Goodbye. had a good night. I thank you both for joining in again, and hopefully we can have the same sort of crew again. This took three and a half hours. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> it's all our bedtimes. Again? Uh, it's not, not my bedtime, kid. I don't know about you. Yeah, you're the <laughs> Pacific timer. Saturday night's all right for fighting. But, in any case... Thank you all, and hopefully things can get more on time and